Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to another edition of the Rotopros.com Best DFS show that just happens to come at you around 8 Eastern Standard Time. My name is Rob Diamond. Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter. Sir Robert Six and all the main sites. Welcome to another EPL breakdown for Match Week 31, March 16th, 2019. First thing we need to talk about right away is this is a three-game slate. That means two things. First thing, this is a GPP kind of slate. You don't want to try to play a lot of cash this slate. The cash cards will be defeated by a lot of GPP narratives by people who really don't know how to build a cash card. And the second thing is that because this is a three-game slate, this is going to be a, a week where a lot of people are just going to be right by being lucky. Uh, with only so many different options, for example, if you choose a keeper, you have a one in six chance of being right, just without doing any research or anything. Things. So, yeah, that's a, a pretty big difference compared to other bigger slates. So, in a lot of ways, uh, all you're, you're going to be able to take a lot of different risks in GPP, uh, and a lot of you'll notice in cash uh, specifically, a lot of random things will be happening and winning, and uh, that's not necessarily uh, something that you want to get too deeply involved in. So, yeah, first game on the slate this uh, for this week, we have Newcastle making the trip from up north uh, down to the south coast to play Bournemouth. Second game on the slate, we have Leicester City making the trip up north to play Burnley and in the third game of the slate, we have Huddersfield making the trip into London to play West Ham. So yeah, first game on the slate is Newcastle to Bournemouth. Uh, this is going to be a pretty interesting game because Bournemouth are kind of turning a corner here on ter in terms of having really bad form as of late. And in general, they are a much better home team than they are away. But at the same time, Newcastle have been consistently one of the better teams in the entire league over the past few weeks. Uh, it's, it's really hard to specific uh, point as to how Newcastle have been so successful because they have been great at goaltender, have been really good at defense, uh, aren't really productive in midfield as we would hope for their salaries, and they're not scoring enough goals uh, to help you take down GPP, but they've been excellent compliments to your cards all season. So, yeah, it's it's really tough to necessarily dictate uh, where this should go immediately, but as a whole... <clears throat> Bournemouth shouldn't be this favored against Newcastle. That's really the first place to take this. Newcastle have been too good as of late, whether home or away, and uh, this isn't really a situation where uh, we can rely on a 5.3k to pay off on a three-game slate. Now, in GPP, sure, Newcastle haven't been scoring enough uh, as a whole, so you can kind of fall on that as a kind of a situation where you can roll with in GPP, but that isn't really the salary you should be looking to pay for this slate in GPP and keepers. Now, to convert, or co uh, contrast, I guess should say, or converse, uh, you have DeBracco, who has consistently all season kept scores low. Now, while he hasn't always put up double digits on the front, uh, he has done well enough in terms of getting saves and uh, having a good shot. And this is the thing at the win. He's uh, won uh, more than his fair share of games as of late. So I have absolutely no issue rolling with DeBracco uh, for only uh, 4.3K uh, in terms of DFS aspect. But in terms of real life, I do think Bournemouth are going to win this game. They are playing too well. So I'm not necessarily looking at the keepers from this game. I think there'll be goals on both both sides, and there will be clean sheets to be had somewhere in this slate. So, uh, definitely not my favorite keeper options of the slate. Now, whenever we look at the defenders, uh, there isn't really a whole lot to look at here. But the only one I'm really necessarily overly interested is in Manquillo for only 4.1k. If he happens to get the start with Shar out, it would surprise me to see Manquillo get the start and play 90 minutes. And for 4.1k, he has more than enough safe floor to pay off in cash and to give you a little bit of extra edge in GPP as he has found a, a decent uh, ceiling uh, when it does occur. Um, now, outside of that, there isn't really too much I'm interested in. Klein was good earlier in the season, but he's completely fallen off the face of the earth in terms of minutes and uh, floor, so uh, not really interested in that. So if you're looking for a defender from this game, Manquillo's really the only guy I would consider. Now, in terms of the midfield, across the slate, uh, I think paying up for midfield is really the way to go. There are a few different value options, but for the most part, you can blindly take one of the high-end midfielders, and you're going to look at double digits almost for a, a really good uh, a really good shot for double digits excuse me so Ryan Frazier will be playing I really like him this late even from 9k and one of the reasons is because uh, he is the questionable I think a lot of people will be afraid to pull the trigger on uh, someone like Ryan Frazier this late though a lot of the midfields are hurt so he should still still, still see 90 minutes now uh, to further that I do like Matt Ritchie a lot even though he is playing as a right back and he hasn't been seeing consistent enough 90 minutes to really uh, make me jump on him instantly so up. Of the pair, I do prefer Ryan Frazier specifically, whether uh, cash or GPP. I think Ryan Frazier works for both. Uh, but in terms of uh, looking for the uh, 
the cash options to slate from this game. You can go either Ryan Frazier or Matt Ritchie. Now, to further that a little bit, uh, Isaac Hayden does have a half-decent floor, but with uh, John Joe Shelby coming back, I'm not as keen uh, considering he could see a minute reduction in finish round three, which would kind of be a little bit of a, a hit from over 4.5K, where you can find a wing back for far less with a much better floor. Uh, but uh, one guy I'm definitely locking into this slate uh, for cash from this game is Almiron from Newcastle from only 5.4K. He's starting to see 90 minutes. He is going up against a team that's probably going to concede and he's doing enough outside of not scoring goals that he wouldn't destroy you in cash like if he gets a goal from any of these it's borderline takedown uh takedown range where uh, you just need everyone else in your card to do what they're supposed to do so yeah i have no issue with the uh, almiron in either format but particular cash this slate i think he makes the most sense and is a borderline cash lock for me this slate as a forward uh for only 5.4k that's the big point here is to make sure to only take him as a forward he's not uh specifically a midfield option for cash because the forward pool is very limited for cash this late so uh, i'll be definitely be looking to use almiron for only 5.4k as my cash lock uh, in terms of Bournemouth, uh, or excuse me, we can stick with Rondon. Rondon makes a lot of sense at all. Stacking Almiron and Rondon, stacking Rondon and Richie. Uh, I don't necessarily like a three-way stack. I don't see Newcastle uh, having a consistent enough ceiling throughout the season to necess necessitate a three-person stack paying off altogether. Unless the only way, it could happen theoretically in a three-game slate where uh, you take uh, Rondon and Almiron, or uh, all three Ronda, Richie, and Almiron, and two of them connect, and one of them connects uh, with just a floor. Uh, and the rest of the slate doesn't really necessarily raw points across the board. That is a script you could chase, but that's not really necessarily the viable script I'm looking for this slate. So I would prefer to, if you're going to, my favorite two would definitely be Almiron and Rondon. Uh, in the case of a GPP, I would definitely use Almiron in midfield. But in uh, terms of cash, uh, you're going to want to lock Almiron up front for only 5.4K. And for Bournemouth, I think it makes a lot of sense this slate to stack guys like Ryan Frazier and... And Calum Wilson, who lead the league in assists and goal combinations, uh, they did. They're, but they've both missed significant time this season with injuries, so it's still impressive that they were doing so well. And that salary is going to scare off a lot of people this late, and then we'll find issues of getting uh, 18, or I should say, excuse me, 17.1k of salary into a card when you haven't used any Leicester players yet. So, uh, yeah, I don't, uh, I, I, I wouldn't talk you out of uh, game stacking this game. Uh, maybe even Rondon too, and looking for goals on both sides. Maybe even uh, Rondon Wilson and Calm King, uh, because like I said, I do think Bournemouth possess. Uh, like I said, excuse me, I don't think Newcastle have a ceiling that necessitate uh, three players, but uh, Bournemouth absolutely do have ceilings that necessitate a three-player stack. Uh, Josh Kane takes the penalty shots. Calm Wilson takes some penalty shots, and he stacks incredibly well with Ryan Fraser. Ryan Fraser ha Ryan Fraser has an incredible floor, uh, has an incredible ceiling by himself, and stacks really well with both Callum Wilson or Josh King. So you have a really sick combo play going there. So yeah, I do think Bournemouth has the ability here to score three goals, and I do think Newcastle has the ability to score a goal. So I'm looking at a final score here of around 2-1 Bournemouth, maybe even 3-1 if they get lucky, uh, but that would requ require a penalty shot of some sort. Uh, so really, for the most part, I'm just going to be locking in on Almiron and cash uh, and maybe Minquillo if I have to and I'd probably keep the Bournemouth guys to GPP just because their salaries are a little bit too high for me and I'd rather chase the ceilings there so yeah I'll say a 2-1 Bournemouth uh, and Almiron as a cash lock this slate Next game on the slate, we have Leicester traveling to Burnley. Another really interesting game here. Uh, Leicester has Brendan Rodgers at the helm now as their new manager, and he hasn't really been doing as well as most new managers have found uh, success-wise this season. So uh, this isn't necessarily, again, a slate where I think uh, the more expensive keeper necessarily deserves uh, the more expensive salary, especially in the case of Leicester, who are out of this entire uh, slate, more likely to concede out of everyone other than Huddersfield. Uh, probably less likely to score more than a goal than anyone in the slate outside of Huddersfield and maybe Newcastle. Um, so yeah, I they're horrible away from home. 
Rodgers still doesn't have an away win. I don't necessarily see a reason to chase that against Burnley, who have been playing not only really well, but uh, very well in attack in particular. So, uh, as usual, this is a Tom Heaton slate, so you have to ask yourself, is Tom Heaton viable? Yes. Then is he the most expensive? Yes. Then you probably want to use him in cash. Uh, he's going to see enough saves. He has a great shot at the win. And uh, even if he doesn't, he, oof, I know I wouldn't really look too deeply into the Liverpool. And uh, these two games have also been quite poor. Uh, I won't uh, deny that either. But this is definitely a turnaround game. Uh, both Crystal Palace and Newcastle, as I have been mentioning earlier, but Newcastle have been fairly hot as of late. And uh, Leicester, away from home especially, uh, is everything but. So yeah, I have no issue with uh, Tom Heaton this late as a, a cash goaltender. Uh, in terms of GPP, I'm not necessarily bought into the idea of Tom Heaton just because he doesn't really have the wingback stacks, where on the other side of the field, uh, Leicester have excellent floor plays who could very easily find a ceiling. Uh, because this isn't necessarily saying Tom Heaton will uh, keep a clean sheet. He has a decent enough shot, but out of the entire slate, uh, it, it really is tough to trust anyone other than Fabanski and Tom Heaton. So, yeah, I, I do like Tom Heaton for the massive savings, that's for sure, because he does have all the skill that you need. So... If you do want to play some Leicester players in cash, I don't hate the idea of taking uh, Leicester defenders uh, with uh, Tom Heaton in cash. You may just want to take Fabanski and spend up as a defender and uh, try and spend way down on forwards this late. It's really hard to do, but it is possible. So for Burnley and Leicester, like I said, Leicester has all the uh, the ceiling uh, and really good floors. And uh Burnley has all the value, but absolutely no ceiling. So it's tough which way you really want to go with this. If you really want to spend down, you can chase guys who will finish uh, at or below five fantasy points. Uh, it's not necessarily where I'm looking. Charlie Taylor would definitely be the way, way I'd go. But for, from 4.5K, you almost need a little bit of ceiling from his borderline not very good floor. And I th there's just better options uh, across the board. Uh, now, in terms of the midfield, this is really a game where you want to focus spending up this slate. Uh, James Mass is probably one of the top options this slate. If you're using him, you can't really use Tom Heaton. Uh, but I do think uh, James Masson is a borderline lock for cash. And in, the ca in that case, you'll probably have to use another goaltender. Uh, but uh, I also do believe in terms of Leicester, even though they are away, uh, Wilfred Nidley makes a lot of sense from only 4.4K. And in the case that you're using him, you can still use Tom Heaton. Uh, so basically the way I'm looking at that is if you want to use Tom Heaton, use Nidley. If you want to use James Madison, use Fabanski or another uh, another goaltender. Probably, I don't know. I, I'm not even going to go there. Uh, so yeah, uh, it it's tough in terms of uh, which combination you want to go with, but that's really the two combinations for me. Uh, now, Johan Berg Goodmanson still isn't really seeing the minutes that uh, you would need from 7.6K, and to further that, Dwight McNeil, his opposite, is also struggling for minutes and hasn't really seen the floor. Once uh, Johan Berg Goodmanson comes on, uh, McNeil loses all of his uh, set pieces and floor. So I'm not really looking for that uh, in terms of Burnley. I think the midfield isn't really where you want to go. Uh, and in terms of up front, Yes, the Jamie Vardy party is viable in GPP. I think in GPP, stacking uh, Vardy and Madison makes sense again. Uh, maybe even uh, stacking Vardy, Madison, and Nidley, chasing again the, the two ceilings, one floor, uh, tri-stack. Uh, so I don't hate that, but obviously you wouldn't be using Tom Heaton. Uh, and really for Burnley, it's tough to want to pay up or to pay it all for these kinds of minutes and numbers so i'm really not as excited for the burnley forwards but i know at the same time that burnley is going to score at least a goal from somewhere because leicester have been that bad especially away from home uh so it, yeah it's tough where it could come from um i'm going to wait to see what the starters will look like but in terms of running down the list here, uh, Madison, Cash, Goodmanson, uh, maybe GPP if he gets the start. 
maybe even cash if you want to be super risky from 7.6k but i think like matt Ritchie's a better option from the same range Thielmans is definitely in play a uh, viable gpp play dwight mcneil kind of the same issue as goodmanson uh probably use him in gpp uh uh, Harvey Barnes, I uh, like for GPP. Uh, if Demario Gray gets to start, he isn't the worst idea for GPP also. I love if Robbie Brady got more minutes. And I'm not really interested in Ashley Westwood, so maybe he could be uh, a GPP flyer. He's gotten points in back-to-back -back games. So, yeah, let's say Ashley Westwood, 6.5K, is the GPP guy from Burnley. That seems to make a lot of sense. His salary scares me away, so that would make sense as a, a viable overall play. So, yeah, uh, in terms of forwards, uh, Vardy as a GPP. And other than that, I would probably fade the entire forward uh, just for the minutes issues. Uh, so, yeah, a final score... Maybe a 0-0 draw, 2-2 draw. I don't necessarily see a winner this game, but at the same time, I don't see Tom Heaton getting blown out uh, from 4.6K and making more than enough saves. Uh, I'll say a 2-1 a Burnley win, just to stick with the Tom Heaton, though I may like a, another goaltender more. Uh, so, yeah, 2-1 either way, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I prefer using Nidley uh, from 4.4K. Let's say that. Yeah. Next game on the slate, we have uh, the final game. Huntersfield traveling to West Ham. This is a game of hidden gems. I think there's a few different options here that we could be super sneaky with. The first is obviously uh, not uh, Fabanski, who is very obvious play, but uh, it just isn't very sneaky. Use Fabanski to say 5.6K. Huddersfield are the worst team in the league. Historically, one of the worst teams in the league. They've lost, I think, 16 of their previous 18 games. Like They're just really bad, especially away from home. They're not void of options, but they're just really bad. Uh, now, in terms of uh, Losel, you definitely can't get away with some Losel. I wish West Ham were away because West Ham away hasn't scored a goal in like three straight games or something silly. But at home, they have been much better. I, For a value keeper, uh, I think there should be more risk. Uh, so, yeah, I think Losel makes sense from 3.9K as well if you wanted to use a value keeper because I don't necessarily see West Ham scoring more than two goals. It'll just be up to Huddersfield to score a goal at all. Uh, so, yeah, Fabanski makes more sense, though, even uh, from 5.6K. Uh, now, in terms of the defenders, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Um, Cresswell is too expensive, but it's historically an incredible cash play. So I'm kind of, again, waiting for him to come back. And 5.2K definitely doesn't deserve it, so... Maybe some GPP uh, with uh, Fabanski. That seems to make a lot of sense. Him, the problem is him and uh, Masuaku play the same left-hand side. So they're not playing at the same time, both taking each other's minutes. Uh, the other side will be a little bit more interesting with someone like Ryan Fredericks uh, probably seeing the 90 minutes again. And I think he makes a lot more sense for something like Cash at only 3.8K. Uh, now you can chase him and Cres Cresswell and Fabanski together, but I think that just uh, works a lot better uh, in terms of, uh, of the cheaper option and you can use him in either format and if he finishes from 6k you're flying uh now the interesting thing about uh huddersfield wingbacks is that um they don't necessarily play the ones they should hattie gajong has been playing as much used to be a solid 90 minute player uh, Chris Lowe isn't the worst cash option either, but again, uh, bad minutes, not necessarily a decent enough floor. Uh, really, though, where I'll be looking in terms of Huddersfield this slate and in terms of cash defenders is a midfielder, and it's uh, Bakuna for only 3.8K. Uh, he's playing right back for Huddersfield, and you can see the difference that is making to his cross count. Uh, so, yeah, I have absolutely no issue using uh, Bakuna this slate uh, as, as uh, either cash or GPP because if in the case Huddersfield do uh, get uh, shut out, uh, 
a lot of that will come through his defensive uh, uh, peripheral stats. He won't get the clean sheets because he is a midfielder, but he'll still have a little bit of extra floor to give him that kick. Uh, so, yeah, I don't dislike uh, Bakuna either. Uh, now, in terms of midfield, once again, I'm, I'll, I'll touch on this in, in forwards, but Snodgrass, when he plays, sees uh, enough minutes and does have a decent enough floor. But again, his salary just doesn't justify the overall lack of ceiling him and West Ham uh, are put out. So uh, <clears throat> he is a cash play. He just isn't the cash play this slate. And again, this is why I don't necessarily like this slate for cash because he may could very Robert Snodgrass could very well easily end up being an excellent cash play this slate, though he doesn't deserve it just because it's only a three game slate. And the same can be said for Fleet Anderson, uh, who if he sees nine minutes could be a viable GPP option. But uh, I'm not really too interested in uh, the West Ham midfield. And Moy I'm waiting for him to start putting out solid floors again. A lot of this has to do with if Jonathan Hogg plays, Moy will usually have a pretty decent floor. If Jonathan Hogg doesn't play, uh, Moy has to play defensive and he doesn't put out a decent floor. So uh, I don't hate Aaron Moy this late from 4.8K as well. I think uh, you can take him and Bakuna together in cash and you're not even doing that bad because it's only uh, 7, 6, 9-ish K. Man, my math is bad. Yeah. 10.2. Let's say that. Let's guess. So yeah, uh, not very much salary at all. And you can easily get five fantasy points uh, to eight fantasy points from the pair of them, which would pay off for cash and set you up with any kind of expensive options that you decide to go with. In terms of forwards, um... Carlin Grant is someone that I would like to go with in cash, but he's starting to see a minutes reduction, which makes sense because he isn't necessarily deserving of 90 minutes. Uh, he was just kind of a desperation answer for Huddersfield, and it worked out for a game, but not really any more from that. Kachuga has been seeing a lot of starts, uh, but rarely finishes games. and just doesn't deserve consideration for me in either format. Uh, now, the issue with West Ham, the major issue is minutes. Uh, the vast majority of them not only don't play 90 minutes, but are priced that they're the best options of the slate. And, yeah, you can get Bournemouth guys that are going to play more minutes uh, than, again, like when he gets 90 minutes, it was uh, not very profitable. Uh, so, yeah, it's really tough. Antonio has seen 90-minute games uh, recently, but... Yeah, it's again. You're you're really desperate looking for points at that at that stage. Uh, there just isn't any minutes. Uh, so yeah, for GPP three game slate, maybe you can get away with chasing a lack of minutes kind of player. But in terms of uh, spending down, all the guys that I've highlighted here are all super viable, uh, low salary plays, other than Fabanski, obviously. Uh, but yeah, super uh, low, uh, low salary uh, kind of floor plays that you can fit in either format to fill. And I'm still waiting again for Lanzini to have his breakout game. Uh, he's won't be seeing 90 minutes anytime soon again, which is a little bit disappointing. But, uh, yeah, I really do like Lanzini to have this the skill set to, to break open a slate. Uh, but, yeah, um, in terms of the final score, I would probably say a 0-0, 1-0 West Ham win. Uh, maybe a 1-0 one, one either way would make sense. I just don't see a lot of goals coming from this game because West Ham have been so poor at scoring goals, especially away from home. And uh, they're... Their low-scoring game script matches with their lack of viable options up front. So that's just the way I'm looking at it. So, yeah, we'll say one nothing either way. So, yeah, thanks a lot for tuning in, everyone. Hopefully that was a quick enough slate. Uh, Rotopros.com, get over, check us out. Articles, top right-hand corner, drop down, lots of free content. Check out our videos. Like, subscribe, contact. Hit me up on Twitter. Uh, hit me up on message boards. Get over, join our community, uh, get involved in our Slack. It's uh, absolutely bumping as well. So thanks a lot, everyone. Take care. Hopefully see some of you at the top, and good luck.